A lot of cards today. <laughs> That's going to be a quick meeting, huh? Nipping. You always need cards. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Wow. Okay, nice. Welcome to the Planning and Land Use Management Committee. We've been joined by the Honorable Councilman Jose Wieser. And uh, don't believe Councilman anyone will be with us today. I'm assuming he's not. So, Roberto, let's see. Oh, a couple of housekeeping. Those of you who have written very elegant, eloquent letters, you got two minutes. So if you need to get to the point of your letter, we would appreciate that very much. You can tell the acoustics in this room is not the best, so if you can speak right into the microphone, we would appreciate it. Give us your name and address. Um, I'm looking at the audience, looks like folks that usually do come here are here, so that's good. Um, so that being said, uh, let's go to the first item, Roberto. Uh, sure, item one, council members, is a planning department report. It's in response to a motion, Parks Perry, uh, relative to general plan maintenance fee. We have the staff come forward. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Eva Yuan McDaniel with the uh, planning department. This item is to instruct the department to report back on the general plan maintenance fee um, and also um, the impact of the fee on the new community plan program. The planning department currently collects a 3% general plan maintenance fee on the planning cases and some building permits. And the annual revenue from this fee is about 100 point, um, I'm sorry, 1.6 million a year. And that is used to supplement the funding needs for the community plan work program. And of the 1.6 million, uh, about half of it goes to pay for indirect and about half, the second half is to pay for salaries in the planning department with the, so the amount that comes to the planning department is about 960,000 based on the current revenue level. And the 960,000 right now funds about um, 10 planner positions at various levels and two technical support positions. One is a GIS position and a graphic designer position, which are critical to the ongoing development and the finalization of the community plans. And um, based on the department's uh, estimate, the 10 position is about roughly adequate to fund to staff four community plans. Each one, each community plan work program takes about 2.5 planner positions at different um, various levels. And the impact of the, um, the fee on the community plan program is ob obviously positive because in this city budget situation to fund a community plan program with prior general fund is um, not a, it's a very difficult. So even though $960,000 is not sufficient to fund a, a very robust work program, it at least get the community plan work program move forward without a serious requirement from the general fund. Great. Um, any questions from my colleagues on the side? So um, we could uh, look at can continues for 30 days and essentially direct the planning department with the help of the CAO uh, to report back to this committee on funding options and any needed position authorities to update the city's committee plans. Okay? Now, yes, sir. And also one more directive uh, as to the impact, and we already talked about this, um, as to Prop 26 and whether it would impact any potential increase to the general plan maintenance fee. And the planning department can include that in the report back. Yes, we will address that in our report. Okay, just, but just for the record, yeah, to understand record. how we are responding to or what our status is with Prop 26. Correct. Okay. Um, I know there's a lot more to say about this, but I'll wait till you come back. Yes, we'll All be right. back in 30 days. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, item two, Roberto. Uh, yes, item two, council members, is a Cultural Heritage Commission uh, report. 
uh, providing comments relative to uh, a potential historic cultural uh, monument at the California State, uh, excuse me, at the California Aerospace Museum. So, so my understanding is that uh, one of the parties is not here and another party is. Can you explain to me what's going on right now? Good afternoon, committee members. Lambert Giesinger with the Planning Department. The item before you is comments, uh, recommendation from the Cultural Heritage Commission that the city make comments to the State Office of Historic Preservation relative to a nomination that's been submitted to include the Science Center as a California Register Monument. And the applicant is here today to speak, but I know there's maybe been a request to continue this item so that representatives from the museum could be here. I don't have a card for a speaker, but if they would like to speak at this time, I'd be more than happy to welcome them. Otherwise, we can continue it one week, but out of courtesy to them that they made the trip out here, it's up to them. I think I think she'd just as soon have the item heard all at once. So okay, so I'm wait for one week? Yes, ma'am? Okay, so I want to make sure we respect the fact that you're here and it's no fault of yours, they're not here, so I want to make sure I honor the fact that you made the trip. So, okay, we'll continue this for one week. All right, thank you. Next item. Um, item three is a motion of Rizar Wesson um, relative to a request for two city planning associates to work on the Boyle Heights community plan. Can we take three and four together? Uh, sure. Item four is a planning department report which provided an update uh, as to the Boyle Heights community plan. Okay. Good day, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, Councilman Wiesa. I'm Roy Morales with the CLA's office. Uh, last week you considered this motion by Councilman Wiesa to create, to uh, fund two positions to reactivate the Boyle Heights community plan. There were some questions raised in committee. Uh, my apologies for not being here to answer those questions. Your two basic questions were the funding status of these two positions and the process for getting them filled. First, the funding status. Uh, very straightforward. We uh, met with Councilman Wiesar. He expressed what a priority this is for his office, and he asked us to dig, to take a look at this and try and piece together a package. We looked at what the work was that was remaining. We found that the transportation component of the Boyle Heights Community Plan may be eligible for Measure R funding, so we checked with um, the folks who administer Measure R. That component is eligible for Measure R funding. Currently, there is about 104000 set aside for the transportation component of uh, Boyle Heights. That is general fund money. So paying for that with Measure R frees up approximately uh, half of the amount needed for the two positions. The two positions, the total roughly for a full year is about 220000 give or take. Now we're a little further into the fiscal year, so it'll be less. The second com second position that is requested, as, as when this was discussed in Budget and Finance Committee, they were well aware of the, the, the strong demand for general fund and, and uh, the difficulties we were having. At the same time, however, the council was considering the Hollywood Community Plan. That community plan has now been adopted by council. There's still, in my understanding, some work to be done. However, there is an opportunity for this committee and the council to um, request that the planning department reassign some of the resources from that plan to fulfill the second position requested in the, in the motion. As you can see in the Budget and Finance Committee report, they considered that recommendation. It's actually recommendation number four of the Budget and Finance Committee communication. However, the committee that committee believe that it is the purview of the Plum Committee to make that determination whether or not Boyle Heights is a priority plan for the allocation of resources that are currently um, placed on Hollywood. In other words, to move resources that are being freed up from the Hollywood plan to this uh, community plan. So we have funding for one position, and we, um, we recommend that you um, ask that the resource... Sorry, Council. We recommend that you uh, ask that the planning department assign resources from the Hollywood Community Plan to as the second position. Okay. No? Good afternoon, Council Members. Eva Yuan McDaniel with the Planning Department again. Uh, Roy summarized the plan very clearly, and the Planning Department is in full agreement. As soon as we finish up the, some of the uh, remaining items on the Hollywood Community Plan, 
and um, get our counter people trained on the implementation of the plan, we should be able to reallocate that position to the Boyle Heights uh, community plan. And uh, that work, we think, should wrap up within the next month and a half. So if we, um, this motion, that this um, proposal is approved by council, and we will still have to go to the managed hiring committee for, to unfreeze one position using the $104,000 fund. And altogether, if everything goes um, smoothly, we should be able to pay, do the community plan for the Boyle Heights on January, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, October 1st. Okay. And I hope that is satisfactory to everyone. Okay. So the um, measure R resources are factored in here or they're not? It is. The measure R resources will replace the, will fund the uh, TIMP study, T-I-M-P, the Traffic uh, Mitigation Impact Program. And that money, currently we have 104000 allocated for that, encumbered. We will de-encumber that and put that towards staffing. So that will be adequate to fund nine months of a, a planning assistant position. And that is what's unique to this community plan. Correct. Because Boyle Highs was the community plan program it was started back in 2006. So some of the technical work has already been done. And back then, we already had money allocated for the EIR and also uh, the traffic study. Okay. So that is the money that is available to this work program and not available to um, other. So when the report comes to the council, I think those are very important facts so that it is clear that although we would like to fund all the community plans throughout the city, th this set of facts pertaining to this area allows us to move in this direction. Correct. So I want to make sure that's clear in the report. Because uh, there's a reason why we can move in this direction. One, the council has been waiting almost six years. Two, there is measure our monies that will offset a cost and we can shift monies for that position to complete as much as you can with the time allotted. That's unique to this plan because the, the, my gut tells me being on the horseshoe almost 20 years is that other councilors will want to say, well, why not my committee plan? So I need to be very clear how we got here and understand the value of the planning department's role in community plans, but we need to find funding for it. And, and also the EIR, the work on the EIR. And the work on the EIR. So these are very distinct, unique characteristics of this geographic area in the city that allows us to move in this direction. And I just want to make sure that my colleagues are, under, are understanding that right. and it's not anything else. One thing to add, over the past two years, the councilman secured in our budget making sure we retain the funding we had gotten as years ago for Boyle Heights, which is $240,000 in contractual services, has been preserved even through these tough budget times in order to restart this plan. Okay. So it definitely has, I would say, 30 to 40 percent complete compared to the plans that were stopped and started in years past due to funding resources. So this one is the most ripe to restart, which is why the small infusion of money and the way we preserved the money in years past with the councilman's help allowing us to move forward today. So those are salient facts that should be in the report. That's all I'm asking. Hope you we'll can make sure highlight clear. that. Councilman? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thanks everybody who came up with this creative solution. Um, it is the, from the planning department's perspective, the Boyle Heights plan is next in line, right, because of the factors that we outlined. And, and we have data that may go sour, and we don't want to pay for that same information again. So it's cost effective to make Boyle, the Boyle Heights plan the priority amongst the other reasons that we stated. Um, and I think Mr. Councilman Barreas is correct in that uh, should we move in that direction from committee, by the time this gets to council, that should be outlined in some report so that it's clear as to why we're heading in that direction. And um, I, I agree with that. Uh, my question is, um, when this money runs out, what then and how long will it take to actually see this community plan through? And it seems like this process is going to be longer than the funds that are available. So what do we do at that point in nine months from now? Councilman, too, earlier I indicated um, when we were talking about uh, discussing item number one is it takes about two and a half positions to fully fund a, fund a community plan or program. In this case, we will have two positions. And 
So that's an advantage already because of the seven that we're currently working on, they all have only one planner position working on them. That's why it's taking so long. And not only that, um, as we move forward in this fiscal year, and more community plans will come to, uh, will go to city planning commission and then come to council for adoption. As those community plans start to uh, wrap up, we will have more position available. So we have one very important task that we need to do um, right away, that is to assess the work that we have already done in the, in the Boyle Heights community, the EIR work that we have performed, the TIM, some of the TIMP work we have already done, we need to assess that, and the community engagement, that, um, a focus group meetings, material we need to, we need to do. And we need to, as soon as we kick off, hopefully October 1st, the first thing we will do is to assess what we have, where we stand today, and then we will come back to um, the Boyle Heights, uh, Council District 14, and the community to let you know our assessment of the schedule. Okay, thank you. Well, Chairman, um, I'd like to then move that we adopt the budget and finance recommendations and amend them to endorse the Ball Heights Community Plan as a priority for the additional community planner resources within the planning department and ask that the planning department provide an explanation uh, as to the reasoning behind this for the city council meeting. And I think if we do that, we could uh, note and file um, number four and, and move item number three to full council with that amendment. Okay, that's that will be the action of this committee. Okay, and there are no cars on this item either. So, thank, thank you, very you much. council members. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody who worked on this. Appreciate it. All right, Roberto, next item. Next item, council members, is a building and safety uh, report um, dealing with uh, the issue of um, of signage, on-site signage in the city. Good day, sir. Good afternoon, uh, honorable council members. A little bit louder, David. Oh, thank you. Uh, Dave Lara with Billing and Safety. Um, we have a report in front of you that uh, we have actually recommended a, a receive and file on. Um, however, um, we understand that there is a uh, possible need to, to look at in a future sense what kind of funding could be available for such programs. So uh, with that, if, uh, if there is a recommendation from this committee, uh, we'd be willing to uh, go along with that recommendation as far as uh, instruction on how to, how to proceed. Okay. Given the, uh, the challenge that is in front of us, with the issues that arise with this kind of, uh, uh, with this direction that we could take, I think it behooves us to have the CAO along with your department to prepare uh, an analysis of what it would cost to carry X positions to implement this. Um, I want to take this one step at a time because it is a uh, overwhelming uh, scenario when you look at the notion of identification and enforcement of these types of regulations. So incrementally, let's not chew off too much. Uh, let's just start one step at a time. And so we'll begin with this step. And uh, if you can give us a status in 45 days, uh, if we can get to a complete picture, we understand. Tell us how much time you need, but at least we can see some traction. Could we uh, possibly ask for at least 60 days? We're still we're going to be working on some budgetary issues at this time, and the staff that we have working on that, uh, the additional time would would help us out immensely. I feel like I'm negotiating for a car here. It's like uh, <laughs> meet me halfway. <laughs> you asking for 60 days? Um, okay, it's it, it's this fine. committee. That's fine. Five days. All right, Dave. Okay. Now that's, give us the status and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. And, uh, anything else we need to do with the side of it though? You may want to receive and file the 2010 report, uh, since there's an updated 2012 report on file. Okay. Then we'll do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
All right. Next item, Roberto. Um, the next item, council members, is a planning commission uh, report. It's relative to a development agreement uh, between Forest Lawn and the city of LA. Okay, we have staff come on up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Blake Lamb with the planning department. The Forest Lawn expansion project was approved by the City Planning Commission on May 9th, 2012. And what's before you today is only the development agreement, um, the consideration of the development agreement, which the City Planning Commission recommended be approved with certain public benefits and for a term of 40 years. So the request today is to request this committee direct the city clerk to prepare a letter requesting the city attorney's office to begin work on the ordinance and the development agreement for your future review and approval. Okay, and are you familiar, familiar with the amendments that's being contemplated by the council office? Um, no, I'm not. Okay, then you've got to stay tuned because it's going to come. All right. <laughs> Ms. Weitzer, come on up. You mean you didn't tell her beforehand? <laughs> I know. Renee, Renee. Uh, I think she actually knew about it because we discussed it after the commission hearing. For the record, Renee Weitzer representing Councilman Tom Labange. I'm going to be very brief. Councilman Labange strongly supports the master plan as well as development agreement for Forest Lawn. Um, at the planning commission, we requested that approximately 135 acres of the Coenga Highlands property owned by Forest Lawn be donated to the city and specifically to Griffith Park uh, to be permanently conserved. I think that is in the uh, staff report, the examiner's report, but what is not there is also at that time we asked Forest Lawn to donate funds to the city for the construction of trails for public use on the Coenga Highland property to connect the property to the Coenga Peak, which was recently purchased by the city. Forest Lawn has agreed to donate $75,000 for the construction of trails, and we're very extremely pleased with that, and we support the development agreement and the master plan. So are we going to see you jogging with Councilman LeBond? Oh, absolutely, yes, yes, I'm going to be jogging. <laughs> okay. Hiking. <laughs> Hiking, all right. I know that's a morning ritual for him, so. I don't know if I'm in that kind of shape. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for your input. Thank you very much. Okay. And we also have Mr. Milston. Uh, thank you very much, George Milston, Latham & Watkins, representing Forest Lawn. Forest Lawn is very pleased to be here today. Uh, Forest Lawn has been serving the Los Angeles community for over 100 years, and we are very pleased with the support we have received for this master plan for the Hollywood Hills facility. Uh, we received support from hundreds of community leaders, uh, the unanimous endorsement from the Hollywood Hills West Neighborhood Council, Folar also supports it, Northwest Trees, Northeast Trees, and many other community organizations. We support the recommendations of the staff and of the council office with respect to the dedication of the additional 135 acres and the $75,000 uh, for the construction of a new trail within the Coenga Highlands property. Uh, we request your approval of the development agreement and thank you very much for your consideration. Just for the sake of uh, clarity, these trails will be at the periphery of the property or they can go through the property? How, the, the, how would it be? Um, there is a, I'd be happy to show you a map, but there's a trail that's been plotted out by Forest Lawn uh, that comes through the center of the property and actually connects to a DWP uh, access road. Okay. And it will allow people to use the DWP access road as well as to come up to Coenga Peak, which was just acquired by Griffith Park in the city. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Any questions, Councilman? All thank right. You, thank well, you very much, sir. Okay. Good work. Thank you. Staff, on up. Now that you reviewed the amendments, are you yes. okay with them? Um, well, actually, this item was um, reviewed by the City Planning Commission. The details of it in terms of the timing of when it would be conveyed to the city as well as the $75,000 donation um, was something that was discussed at the Planning Commission. Yeah. So obviously, um, in the few minutes I had to review this, um, this is in line with what the CPC did approve. And Fantastic. I would recommend it also be included. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yes, we are. Thanks. So great. So as a committee Maybe we would uh, approve a development agreement as amended? Uh, no, Councilman. Actually, you will request the city attorney to prepare the ordinance 
I was about to do that. Okay. But go ahead. What else do I need to do? Uh, that's it, councilman. Okay. I was going <laughs> to get there. <laughs> but you let me finish, Roberto. All right. Okay, senor. So that's, that's the action of this committee. Okay. All right. Next item. Uh, I think item seven was uh, con is continued, councilman. Okay. Item seven continued to August 21. And council uh, the same day. Uh, no, actually in council September 4th. September 4th, all right. I've got some old notes then. Okay. And um, item number eight. Um, item eight, uh, Councilman, I believe it's a receive and file. Yeah, I do have cards on it though. Okay. I, I think the appeal has been withdrawn. All right. So, please. Maya Zitsevsky, uh, planning. I was the zoning administrator on this action, and the appeal was improperly filed by the neighborhood council. We just got word that they withdrew the appeal um, oh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think the cards that you have there are from oh, the operator of the business, and he left when he found out the, that the uh, appeal was withdrawn. So I'm assuming they don't want to speak then. Right. Okay. No? All right. Are you here for this? No. <laughs> I just want to make sure we ask them. They took the trip here, so. Yes, that's our recommendation that you receive and file. So we're receiving files since the appellant withdrew the application. All right. Anything else, Roberto? Yes. This item is item nine, which is Mr. McGrain's uh, uh, weekly report. Mike McGrain, for the record, nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who's that singing with that deep voice? It's, uh, who is that? Uh, <laughs> Barry White. No, no, Barry White. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, public comment, Council. Okay, anybody have a public comment? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.